Okay. Okay, thank you very much for joining our session. Um, today I'm going to um, present our Altai Super Wi-Fi solution uh, regarding the wireless broadband applications. Um, I'm Danny Ng, um, I'm Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing here in Altai headquarters in Hong Kong. Um, so today I'm going to give you the overview of our um, company, you know, who we are, what we do, and also I'm going to talk about our technologies, the product range, and also in the end, I'm going to give you uh, some of uh, our case studies, success stories, which shows you uh, where our solution has been deployed around the world. So first is about the uh, introduction about the company, Altai. So we, um, we have uh, started uh, actually the, back in um, 2006. And actually so far we have deployed our carrier Wi-Fi solution across the world in over 100 countries. Okay. And um, our uh, group actually started actually as a, a part of the research group inside the Hong Kong government funded research institute called the ASTRI. And then in 2006, our um, development of smart antenna technologies became mature. And so we spun off as a privately held company till today. And from the inauguration of uh, the company till today, we are focusing on the uh, development of innovative wireless broadband solutions. Okay. And in terms of our products, actually we started off with um, outdoor products. Uh, because our technology, our smart antenna-based technology is very uh, good for coverage, which provides a exceptionally large area coverage. So in the beginning, uh, the application is for outdoor, because indoor usually you're talking about a very small um, you know, uh, area. Okay? But along the years, actually we have developed a complete portfolio covering from the outdoor indoor and even for the macro micro pico coverage along with our network management platform which i'm going to talk a little bit details in the product section and in terms of our customer base actually is divided into two major segments okay one is what we call the um, the public network which i'm going to address it today um, covering a you know like a wireless isp uh, mobile operators for you know Wi-Fi data of, uh, for for mobile data offload applications, or some government funded like municipalities Wi-Fi. Okay, so this is what we call the wi uh, the public network. Uh, on the other hand, we also have another major market segment in the uh, private sector, which we call the vertical market. Okay, so it ranges uh, really a lot. You know, from uh, uh, like a hotel uh, container port. Um, uh, just office, production plant, uh, mines, power plants, all these kind of uh, um, you know vertical markets, and we are more focused in the I would say industrial applications where the environment is very challenging and the uh, customer uh, you know demand is very um, very very uh, very tough. Okay. So our business model is also very simple. Okay, we uh, we do have a small footprint, you know, in some uh, strategic locations, like uh, we have uh, someone in uh, South Africa and also in other continents as well. And uh, our business model is that we do sell through partners. Okay, and it depends on the, each individual country. Some of them, uh, some of the strategic ones, we may have a you know, master distributor to handle the, the channels and the sales. And in some other countries, we would have some partners or in some integrators. And we also have some um, you know, strategic partners you know, for um, some strategic market or strategic uh, uh, market segment. Okay. Um, here is just a glance at our time for what we have achieved in the last 15 years or so. Um, as I mentioned earlier, 
we are the first one introducing this 8x8 MIMO smart antenna technology back in uh, 2002. And then in 2000, sorry. We still, we still have your, your first slide on. Your slides are not changing. That's better. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So, and um, along the years, we have been uh, awarded by some uh, institutes for what we have achieved. For example, you know, uh, we have received a couple of uh, Hong Kong awards for industry for our technological achievement. And uh, we also, we were named the uh, Red Hearing 100 Asia back in 2006. We also awarded by Boeing uh, for the Research Technology Silver Award. Uh, we have also received a couple of times, you know, from uh, Hong Kong ICT, the, the award. And more recently, uh, we were awarded by the IET, uh, the British Institute for the Innovation Award of, uh, for Communications. And uh, in 2019, we were shortlisted as the top 10 wireless solution providers by the online magazine Apex CIO Outlook. Okay, um, so uh, moving forward, um, this is actually what we have, um, uh, what I will talk about our small footprint um, around the world. So our headquarters is in Hong Kong, where I am today uh, having the session. Uh, where we have um, most of the corporate functions, including the finance administration, uh, sales marketing, and uh, the major R&D team are also here in Hong Kong. Um, across the, um, the border, we have this, uh, another small office in Sunjin, which is in the southern tip of China mainland, um, where we hold a small team of our R&D as well. And just like any of those high-tech companies, uh, we are focusing on the research and development and for the production and we use uh, contract manufacturers. And in our case, we use the um, contract manufacturers in Taiwan, okay? Um, which is, I would say, maybe may be good at this time because of this uh, China-US uh, conflicts. So uh, I think having production from Taiwan give us a little bit of an advantage. Hopefully, and mm -hmm. um, also uh, um, in terms of the sales uh, presence, uh, we do have uh, you know uh, most uh, presence in most of the continents. For example, we have one in the South uh, East Asia, uh, one in China in Beijing covering the China mainland. We also have um, presence in the uh, Israel to cover the Europe market. We also have a presence in. Uh, uh, Morocco and South Africa to cover this um, African continent. We also have a team uh, in South America, uh, in Argentina and uh, Colombia to cover the Americas. Okay, so we do have a small team, uh, but we do cover the uh, the worldwide market. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have deployed in over 100 countries today. So moving on to um, technologies. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, our fundamental technology is our smart antenna technologies, okay? So till now we have over 20 patents uh, all around this uh, smart antenna and the controls and algorithm, etc. So here is the list of those uh, patents that we have uh, in both US and China. And Speaking of our super Wi-Fi technologies, okay, the reason why we call our solution super Wi-Fi because uh, I think we do deserve it uh, because our uh, solution does provide a superior performance, you know, compared with what we call the standard Wi-Fi solutions or product. Um, first, definitely is our uh, 8x8 MIMO smart antenna, which give you the unprecedented uh, coverage, okay? Um, we can go up to 1.7 kilometer range, okay? 
uh, I'm talking about just standard uh, Wi-Fi clients like those, uh, you know, uh, smartphones or laptops and those kinds of gadgets. Okay, I'm not talking about the CTE because a lot of people when they talk about coverage or long co long range coverage, uh, they would just say, oh, no problem. I can also do the, I can also do the same. So I can just boost up the power on the base station or the AP side. Okay, or using a high gain antenna which definitely will, will increase the link budget. But the problem is in order for a communication link to work, okay, it has to be two way, okay? The, the down link and also the up link as well. So the problem always is, lies on the client side, okay? Like this is smartphone, uh, because the power, transmit power is low and also the antenna built in here is also very crappy, okay? so. Um, even if, even though if you have uh, just uh, turn up your your power in the base station, use a high gain antenna, okay, the downlink works, okay. But what about the uplink from the client side back to the base station or the AP side, okay? So those people they can also argue, okay, no problem. Then you have to use the CPE, then they, like external CPE, which also have a good power and antenna com combinations, so which can establish a proper communication link. By the way, this will defeat the purpose because the reason why Wi-Fi becomes such a dominant wireless technology because it is everywhere. You, you can find Wi-Fi virtually almost everything nowadays that you have a hand on. Okay, you know all your gadgets have Wi-Fi uh, equipped. Even your car, you know your some household devices, you know smart uh, household appliances, they all have uh, Wi-Fi enabled today. And even when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, industrial 4.0, IoT, all these kind of uh, buzzwords you talk about, actually the most uh, used technologies is Wi-Fi, okay? Of course, there are also some other underlying technologies as well, but those uh, new technologies, they are not as uh, most readily available as Wi-Fi, okay? So with our smart antenna, uh, smart antenna I would say we are the only one who can achieve this kind of uh, distance, okay, with just a standard client devices. We are the only one. The next is about interference, okay. Since we are in the unlicensed span, you know, for Wi-Fi, we are primarily using 2.4 gigahertz and also uh, 5 gigahertz, and also with the introduction of Wi-Fi 6E, that the 6 gigahertz band will be gradually uh, available to uh, some countries and some users as well. So this, with, those are what we call the unlicensed band, meaning it's shared among with other, uh, other people. So um, inevitably, you are going to face interference, okay? And that's why, you know, if you want to deploy a, a, a network, a Wi-Fi network, you, you should also consider some kind of RF planning. Uh, of course, if you're talking about a private network, you know, in a closed premises, doesn't matter whether it's indoor or outdoor, it would be much easier, okay? Because you own the you own the location, so you can plan accordingly to avoid interference. But if you are talking about like a, a public network service provider, like an ISP, uh, then you you do need to uh, plan carefully, okay? In order to you know uh, optimize your network the RF performance, okay? So one of the things that uh, I can say, or I would say this is one of the myths for many of those uh, uh, users, uh, they always come to come to us, come to me asking about, oh, okay, um, how to avoid interference, how to how how to how to do so. So that is just very simple thing about um, antennas, okay? Because I've been dealing with Wi-Fi, uh, I mean wireless technologies all my, all, you know, all my, you know, 20 plus uh, careers. Okay, I've been dealing with all kinds of uh, different wireless technologies. Okay, right. you know, dating from you know uh, the land mobile, you know, moving up to uh, uh, WiMAX, Wi-Fi, you know, 3G, 4G, LTE. I, I've dealt with all that. Okay, uh, and I can say that most of those is for. I would say in any kind of a serious wireless network, okay, they all use, you know, directional antenna, okay. But for somehow in Wi-Fi, people tend to use only antenna. 
um, I think it's just for the sake of simplicity because people will 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 will, will not expect that users will know how to optimize their their, their network, how to you know uh, uh, deploy their AP, okay? Because uh, like at home or even in some office, you know, the, the people will just oh okay, I just buy an AP from the from the from the shop and then just put it un, under under the cupboard under the table and then off you go, you should work, right? So I think uh, in that sense, okay, only on antennas should work with most of these people, okay? But if you are a, like a ISP, uh, uh, you, you want to provide a, a public service, then you have to plan properly, okay? You can't just throw in something and then hope it will work. It doesn't work for, for wireless technology, unfortunately. Not even for Wi-Fi, for large areas. If, for example, if you're talking about like a, a, a city Wi-Fi or municipality Wi-Fi, you have to plan properly, okay? So one of the things is about our product, apart from all these smart antenna technologies, is uh, most of the products come with a built-in, you know, uh, satellite antenna, okay? This is the one of the easiest way to control your RF radiation and also to control uh, the reception of interference, okay? Of course, you know, the, in our uh, uh, firmware, we also have those uh, uh, interference vegetation uh, algorithm built-in as well. Here comes the third point about our management platform. Um, we have started to develop this um, cloud solution, I think around uh, four or five years ago. So this is called Altai Care. Um, so we are also one of the uh, pioneers who launched this uh, cloud uh, management platform. Of course, today, I think uh, everyone, most of the vendors will, will have this uh, cloud management platform available to their, to their customers, okay? Uh, but back then, you know, when we started to launch this our cloud platform, actually the, we had some setback because uh, in some of those uh, countries or market, actually, you know, uh, they find it difficult to connect to cloud. Uh, for example, in the African continent, uh, because the broadband connectivity is not that uh, available, okay, in many places. That's why you know they find it difficult to hook on to cloud. So eventually we have to make us uh, a, another version of that uh, for on-premises, okay, deployment. So we do have on-premises deployment and also we have the cloud version as well to support different uh, market situation. And the other one also uh, I would like to talk about is AirFi. AirFi is also an, our, another patented uh, algorithm uh, which uh, primarily optimize the throughput you know for your uh, for your uh, AP or the Wi-Fi base station okay so on average you can uh, you know uh, double the, the, the capacity on the peak you can uh, triple the, the peak throughput as well so um, the, I would say the analogy is uh, quite simple um, because air fire is more like to reallocate the resources the, the air resource the air time resources to different clients okay so that those uh, those you need, for example, those at the far end will have more resources for to, to transmit their, their data. Okay, uh, of course, you know we are not magicians. Okay, so we you know those far end clients will gain you know uh, by having a higher throughput at the expense of those uh, close you know in the close proximity users, which. Anyway, they have a very good, uh, you know, SNL, so they can transmit a high data rate anyway. So, a little bit less, you know, the the the, the, the clients or the users will not feel will not feel it at all anyway. Okay, so this is how we optimize the throughput along the, the, the whole AP. Okay. So here comes the next question. Uh, because whenever I go out to see uh, customers to pitch uh, with uh, different partners, distributors, or um, potential clients, or when I go to even uh, uh, those uh, public seminar or workshop, uh, I, I got a lot of, uh, many times I got this question. So why Altai? Because Altai has claimed to be a super Wi-Fi solution provider, which basically uses standard Wi-Fi, okay? So why is Altai so special? Because there are virtually hundreds of different uh, 
you know, uh, Wi-Fi vendors in the market, ranging from the tier one, you know, th those you, those names you are familiar with, like uh, Cisco, Aruba, whatever, down to uh, those even uh, no names, you know, OEM manufacturers in Taiwan, in China. Okay, so and in terms of products, there are even you know tens of thousands of them. Okay. So why Altai? Okay, here's the question, and I, I'm going, to, I'm trying to address this question in a very uh, just few bullet points. Okay, of course it's not the comprehensive, but this gives you the, just the highlight uh, why we are different, or I would say why you should use Altai solution, you know, for your network or for your uh, for your territory. Okay, so first of all, this is about our smart antenna technology. As I already pointed out, we can reach up to 1.7 kilometer range to standard client devices, which nobody else can achieve that. Nobody. Okay. Of course, we assume line of sight and also we assume the environment is very clean in terms of the RF interference, noise, etc. Secondly, it is also um, a, a, something to do with our um, super coverage. Because of this uh, smart antenna technology, because we can provide exceptionally uh, large coverage, that's why we can have um, the lowest TCO. I'm not sure if you guys know what TCO is. TCO means total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership is actually the uh, the total cost that you need to put on the network, okay, to own it and to run it, okay. Because a lot of uh, people sometimes they may just compare simply about the unit price of this box and this box. Okay. Oh, you your box is a uh, you know uh, one thousand dollars. Okay. This box is uh, eight hundred dollars. So yours is more expensive. I, I'm going to choose the the cheaper one. Okay. In, in many in some cases, yes, you you can do so. For example, if I'm going to buy a projector, I'm going to buy a laptop. Yeah, okay, you may do it. Uh, compare just uh, you know uh, purely on prices or based on the specification and your requirements. Okay, but in terms of a network, you should not do so. Okay, you should not do so. You must you must as a network operator or you as a network planner, you must compare the TCO, the total cost of ownership. Just to give you an example, for example, uh, you know, for a given um, target coverage area, let's say just a, a small region in Joburg or in Durban, in Cape Town, whatever, um, you want to provide a public uh, service, okay? Either you are a ISP or you are a municipality, you want just to give this uh, the, the public service, okay? Then you need to see the size of your target coverage and also the number of subscribers and also the terrain, what it looks like. You know, is it a, a flat or not flat, or is there a lot of tree or, or uh, something blocking? Then you need to plan ahead, okay? And to find the, uh, to have a, some kind of a design, RF design, okay? To pick the sport to place your Wi Fi base station or AP, okay? And in doing so, and also if you deploy Altai Super Wi-Fi base stations, you will need much less number of AP. Okay. In that sense, you will need much less number of sites as well. Especially when you talk about large area like a city Wi-Fi, municipality Wi-Fi deployment, that kind of scale. Believe me, finding a site is difficult, and sometimes it is also costly. Okay. And in addition to that, you also need to take into account how to arrange your backhaul to fit the connectivity to the site, okay, and the power. All of these cost you money, okay. And that is what we are talking about the TCO, the total cost of ownership, okay. And on average, I would say using Altai Super Wi Fi base station, you would need about uh, one tenth. The number of uh, of APs of the site, okay, compared with what we call the standard AP, okay. In that sense, you will minimize your capex, you know, for the equipment, for the site acquisition, and also the opex, you know, the operation cost. For example, you need to pay for the power, you need to pay for the the site itself, the monthly rental, 
and also you need to pay for the backhaul, the you know, to feed the connectivity there. Okay, so they it will be a great saving if you take all these accounts. So uh, you may say that you you can use our you know flagship product, the A8 uh, Wi-Fi base station. It might cost a little bit more than the, some uh, standard Wi-Fi AP, but you know in the in the network, believe me, it will be much much cost effective. Okay. The other one is always connected. Um, this is actually something that we consider a very essential element to, doesn't matter whether it's the, to the private network or to public network. As I mentioned earlier, even for private network, we also target for those industrial applications where they, you know, are highly, they are highly demanding. Uh, they need a very reliable network, and also for public network, it goes the same. Especially if you are the uh, network operators, definitely you would like to have minimal downtime, and you because you want your all your, your service to be available all the time to your uh, subscribers or the target users. Okay, so our you know uh, Wi-Fi base stations are already built in the redundant connectivity, you know, for the backhaul. So uh, you can use a wireless or wired, or you can fit both into the our Wi-Fi base stations as a redundant backhaul connectivity. In case the wired goes down, okay, the wireless one can pick up, okay. And also the fast recovery. And also we are also uh, uh, working on a new feature called Always Connected, uh, which allows the client to connect to multiple APs at the same time, okay. This way, even if there's any problem with one of the base station or the AP, whether it's down or the, uh, the power down or the equipment down, then actually uh, the clients will automatically connect to the other one without even the downtime because there's no even handover. Because if we allow the clients to connect to you know, multiple APs at the same time, so there's no handover, there's no uh, roaming at all. Okay, so this uh, may not be that necessary for for uh, uh, you know public network provider, but this is what we have been developing, you know, for those uh, very uh, demanding industrial uh, applications uh, scenario. Okay, this will allow seamless roaming because we have also optimized you know the the roaming, even though. Uh, in the standard, there is also like a eleven r or related. Uh, standards, uh, you know, uh, governing those uh, fast roaming. Okay, but one thing you need to remember: uh, in order for the standard fast roaming to work, actually everything has to be compliant. For example, your clients has to uh, to follow those uh, standards as well. So, in many cases, uh, those uh, fast roaming, the standard fast roaming, doesn't work well. Okay, in our experience. So in our case, in our time, what we do is actually we have optimized this roaming uh, to make it uh, much better than the standard one. Okay, so we are talking about uh, millisecond roaming, so which is very good for even mission critical applications. And also, most of our products are uh, of very rock industrial design, and most of our products are even IP67 rated. Uh, IP67 is an ingress protection. Uh, so against dust and, uh, and 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 water, okay, and also with the vibration protection as well, and also in some uh, we also can provide explosive explosion proof enclosures uh, if you if you even if you want to deploy in those hazardous areas, okay. Okay, so the next session, I'm going to go over the, the product, okay? So in terms of our product lineup, so I've divided into two, uh, one is uh, outdoor, the other one covers the indoor, okay? So here is our outdoor product lineup. And actually I would say we have divided into three product ranges, um, the top range, the mid range and also our affordable range of products. So let's look into our flagship product first. Okay, our flagship product is called A8. Okay, 
uh, as you can imagine, AA actually the name comes after this eight by eight smart antenna viable technologies that we have patented. So it's available in three form factors. Okay, um, the one in the middle actually is the original form. Okay, uh, which you may be able to see it, even though it's a bit small, uh, the picture. Uh, but on the top of it, you will see there are multiple end connectors, and I can tell you there are eight. Uh, and connectors up here. That is uh, to connect to four external smart antennas, which also developed, uh, designed and uh, de developed by Altai as well. Um, so this one will give you the flexibility. Okay. Uh, of course, you know if you put uh, these four antennas, one in each direction from east, south, west, north, then ultimately you get a omni light coupling. Okay. Uh, but of course, in some certain deployment scenario, you may want to use these four antennas in different combination. And also, each one of them can be individually down tilted to suit for the near end of the fine coupling. So it gives you the best flexibility. But um, as some of you may know, you know, for outdoor, for any outdoor deployment, you know, uh, all these end connectors, you know, after you connect it with the RF cable, you have to wrap it with the three layers of the uh, weatherproof tape. Okay, so it's a bit of work. Okay, uh, so for some installers or labors, you know, they would they would uh, they will not like this product, but this one gives you the flexibility. Okay, so for those who are not keen on this original form of AA, we have the integrated antenna version. Okay. Uh, the most popular one is the one on the left hand side, the AAEIN, which comes with the uh, integrated smart antenna array for sector uh, coupling. Okay, so as you can see in this picture, the radio is the same radio, but the uh, integrated with it is this uh, antenna array. Okay, so it is a uh, tightly integrated, so there's no RF cable involved, so it's easy to deploy. And this, by the way, this is actually the one that can give you 1.7 kilometer range, okay? Because it's a sector coverage, so it, you know, focus the energy to the sector. So it can offer the longest distance, okay? And on the right-hand side, this is a, another version of it, it's called AIN, which comes with an integrated smart uh, omni antenna, okay? Uh, it's not exactly on the antenna. Actually, it is actually just an integrated form of this AA version. Okay. The meaning is you can see the radio is, is still here at the at, at the back of it. Okay. And it is uh, it comes with the radium. And inside the radium, of course, you can't open it. Uh, but if you tear it apart, what you will see there will be four different antennas, two on each side, uh, pointing in different directions with fixed down tilt. Uh, I believe it's, a, I think, two degree down tilt. So this one will give you an omni light coverage with these four integrated antennas inside this radar. Okay, so this is uh, the, the one that you can, uh, I would say, take the advantage of um, AA uh, and also the uh, for easy deployment without those uh, RF cables and also those uh, weather the proof work okay so it saves a, a lot of work for those installers okay but of course it has some uh, limitations uh, for example the down to is fixed you can't change and also it, it has to be for only okay so it is more suitable if you put it on for example like like a, a, a antenna pole okay and this one i would not recommend for example if you put up on the uh, wall mount or on the tower mount okay because uh, so most of the signals will be blocked by the wall, the, the, the tower, okay? So next to our mid-range product. So we have um, three, I, I would say three products here. So let's start with A2. A2 actually is our um, um, uh, special product, which is uh, mainly for uh, wireless bridge, okay? So it comes in uh, two flavors, either the A2 and the A2X. A2 is actually the one with integrated 5 gigas antenna. So this is because most of the people will use 5 gigas for um, backhaul. Okay, so this is the uh, integrated antenna. And it also has a two antenna on top for 2.4 gigas. If you want to use it as well as an AP, then you know you can use them as well. 
So this is a very compact, small size, and easy to, to carry around uh, for backhaul for wireless bridge application. Uh, the wireless as the newest member is called A2X because we also from time to time uh, we receive some com uh, you know comments from the customers that they want to uh, to go for a long wireless bridge. So the built-in five gigas antenna in A2 may not be good enough. So okay. Then we have this A2X, which comes with four antennas, so you can connect to whatever 2.4 or 5G antennas that you need for your particular deployment scenario. Okay. And by the way, you know, we have also optimized in our firmware because standard Wi-Fi will not allow such a long range uh, bridge. Okay. And in our case, we have done uh, the longest bridge for over 35 kilometer. Okay over 35 kilometers. Of course, you need to connect to external antenna like a parabolic dash, uh, the high gain ones, okay, in order to achieve such distance, okay. And on the right hand side, this is actually our AX500. This is the one that is the mid-range product, uh, comes with a built-in smart antenna technologies, okay. It's available in uh, two variants, okay. The S is for sector coverage and T is for omni coverage, okay. So the next one is uh, our affordable um, uh, range products. Okay, this is our C family. Okay, so our C family. Um, let's start with our. I would say that in terms of the number of devices sold, C1N is by far our you know best sold product. Okay, uh, this C1 series is our single band product, okay, meaning it only supports either 2.4 gigas, which is C1N, or 5 gigas, which is a C1AN, okay. It comes with an integrated um, second antenna, okay. Uh, so this one, in terms of the price performance, it is probably the best on the market. This is the, one of the reasons why we have so many, many tens of thousands of them you know, every year, okay. So, and it is very affordable and it is great to be used either as an AP or even as CPU, okay? And we also have the dual band version, which is called a C2S, okay? Uh, this is dual band version and also supports the gigabit and also the, it's also uh, Wi-Fi 5 compliant as well. And we also come with uh, the CX200, which is uh, the one with external connectors for those external antennas as well. So this is actually the uh, the external version for the C2S, okay? So now comes with our indoor product lineup. Um, so the top of the one is actually our high performance one three by three, the A3C, which is for ceiling mount. And then we have an affordable range, one is called IX500. Uh, which is also designed for ceiling mount as well, is two by two. And um, we also have a, a, the new product that we introduced last year in 2020. This is our VX200, which is an industrial CPE, which is a very compact palm size, and is designed primarily as an industrial CPE, which has external co uh, RF connectors, and also supports uh, serial port, because uh, uh, believe it or not, you know, in a lot of industrial applications, they still use a lot of uh, serial port uh, for the basic communication, okay? So this is uh, mainly for the industrial ap applications. So here is our management platform. As I mentioned earlier, we have this uh, Altai Care platform, uh, which is available either in cloud, or in uh, on-premises versions, okay? So to serve with different uh, uh, market. Of course, you can only choose either or, okay? You cannot have both at the same time. And on top of it, we also have another one which is called Altigate because in some uh, network, especially for those large network, public network, which uh, requires layer three tunneling, uh, then you might need this Altigate. So in, for you to understand what Altigate does, basically it's more like uh, what the uh, other vendors call it a uh, controller, okay? 
because uh, Altai, uh, I'm not sure uh, you guys are aware of, of that, okay? So for the AP, there is uh, some uh, um, uh, difference between, I mean, the, 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 the architecture, okay? Some of them, uh, what we call the, the thin AP, uh, the other one is called the fat AP, okay? So <laughs> what is this about the thin AP, fat AP, okay? Uh, it's about the architecture, okay? Thin AP means uh, there is not much intelligence in the, with the AP. So you have to, everything has to go through the controller, which is more like a brain, which controls the network, how data goes, how, how, how things are, are, are going, okay? So this is more what we, this is what the people are called the controller network, controller-based network, okay? Some, some vendors are using this architecture, okay? Um, and then what, what about FAT AP? FAT AP is actually the, the, the AP itself has intelligence. You know, it does not have to go through controller. So this is what we call the controller-less uh, type of architecture. So in our type case, we are FAT AP. So basically, you don't need a controller to run the network, okay? Uh, but in some cases, like this kind of a ton, uh, layer three tunneling, uh, then you will need this out of care, okay? So what it does basically is more like an out of care, uh, you know, out of care, plus some uh, networking feature, the gateway feature, then all housed in the uh, uh, in a server, and this is what out of care is, okay? It supports, you know, central data forwarding and also local breakdown, okay, for large uh, deployments in the area. Okay, I hope all goes well with you guys. And I'll, I'm going to go over to the next session about the wireless broadband application. So, knowing a little bit about our product, so how we're going to utilize them in the real life, in the network, okay? So here is a, like a typical deployment scenario for uh, broadband wireless access, okay? So usually you will have some kind of a site to house uh, the, our base stations. Either it can be uh, our flagship AX series or can be our mid-range product AX500 for street level coverage. So um, when I say street level coverage, I'm not sure if you, you can understand the difference. Because for example, our AX family, uh, we call it Wi-Fi base station. And we, when we call it Wi-Fi base station, because it is really like a base station, the meaning is you can actually co-locate them uh, with even the mobile cellular uh, base stations up in the tower, up in the rooftop, okay? Can be, you know, 20 meter high or even higher, okay? We are, this AX equipment is built for that, okay? We are not shy to say that, okay? which is good for large area coverage so that you can high up at the tower in the rooftop. But in some cases, if your terrain is full of trees or those, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, blocking structures, then you might want to have what we call like straight level coverage. Then you can use our mid-range product, AX500, to do so, okay? Which normally you would, uh, for example, mounted on the uh, exterior wall of buildings, or maybe to put up in the, the uh, lamppost, which may be, you know, uh, maximum like 10 meters or below. This is what we call the straight level coverage in order to avoid those uh, trees or foliage, which will uh, definitely uh, blocking the RF signal uh, you know, dramatically, okay? So once you have this site to set up your base station, okay? Then, as I mentioned earlier, you might also need the wireless bridge for backhauling purpose, then actually you can also backhaul uh, to another site to to uh, to your network, okay? And for the clients, uh, then of course you can directly serve your clients uh, dual band access or single band access of the of your design, either to your uh, the gadgets, the smartphone or the laptop, okay? And also in some uh, models. Uh, you may also want to use um, CPE as well, okay, for each household. Then each household will be equipped with the CPE, either using the C1N for 2.4 or C1AN as uh, 5G CPE to serve different households, 
okay? Because in some areas, for example, in Middle East, those households they are using because of the you know the desert, they, they have the desert environment, so they are using very thick stones, you know, for, for, for the building, for the house, okay? And also they have a very small window. So basically you will not expect the signals can propagate inside the house easily, okay? So CP model can work in some uh, terrains in some countries, okay? And in some uh, cases where you would like to repeat signals to serve uh, like a village or some small area, then you can use uh, our C1 uh, series as a repeater using back-to-back. -back. Why back-to-back? -back? Why can't you use just one? Okay, as uh, for a very simple reason, for the best hour performance, okay? Of course, if you, if you use uh, like a CPE uh, with uh, Omni antenna, you can use it as a repeater mode. You can always set as a repeater mode as well. You can also set a C1N as a repeater mode as well. But, but the problem is the RF performance will not good because the C1 then comes with integrated direct antenna, as you remember. So usually, you know, one of them has to point to the base station side in order to receive the signal as a CPE. So, but normally you would like to serve those at the back of it, right? That's why you have, if you use C1 then, you must use two of them back to back in this kind of arrangement in order to have the best RF comfort, okay? So this is more or less what you, how you use our solution, our products in a typical uh, deployment for uh, wireless broadband access, okay? And again, this is actually the, just repeating some of the benefits that you can gain from using our type of Wi-Fi solution. Because of the smart antenna technology, you get the broadest coverage, which resulting in the lowest TCO, the total cost of ownership, remember? And also because of the ease of deployment, the uh, the number of site, the minimum number of sites, so you will also shorten the deployment time as well. And also with our patented AFI and also all the technologies, we can support the higher capacity as well uh, for those uh, mobile users or even travelers. Okay. So I hope that give you the very good idea what we do, what uh, what products we provide, and also the advantages uh, of using Altai solution and in the wireless broadband uh, the deployment applications. So in the last session of, uh, the last part of this session is the case study. I was going to present some of our uh, live deployment in different parts of the world to share with you uh, how the people enjoy using Altai supervisor solution in their country, okay? Uh, let's start with uh, in Asia, in India. Uh, as you may know, India is a, uh, the second populated country in the world and definitely uh, providing ubiquitous, uh, you know, broadband is a challenge to them, okay? So we work with one of uh, our customers there called Dataforce uh, in a city called Surat of India, which is uh, more in the uh, northwestern part of India for citywide coverage. And of course, because of the ARPU is uh, extremely low, so they can only afford our uh, affordable range of product, the C1N. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, C1N, even though it is our, uh, in terms of price, it is uh, probably our cheapest product on our catalog, but their, our performance is one of the best on the market, okay? So that's why I have emphasized that C1N is, uh, in, in, in terms of the price performance, it's probably the best in the market, and that's why it sells really a lot, okay, in many different uh, markets for different scenarios, okay? Here is just one of the cases that we did in India. Uh, you may not be able to see because it's quite small, but you can see that they have this uh, C1N uh, building in the uh, buildings, like in here as well, okay, this is a C1N, okay? And the, and the customer, Dataforce, they are selling vouchers uh, prepaid, those prepaid vouchers uh, by those uh, uh, corner shop, okay? And they also put up some advertisement in those, uh, uh, this is a, like a like a, like a, like a tuk-tuk, this is the tricycle, okay? Which is very common uh, uh, transportation in India, okay? 
and not just in those uh, developing uh, countries, but also in developed countries like in US, okay, Hawaii. It's not exactly in the main con in the continent, but it's uh, in Hawaii, in Honolulu. Um, our customer actually would like to deploy the network mainly for tourists, okay? Their target customers are the tourists, okay? Uh, actually mainly Japanese ones, okay? Because um, you may not know how many Japanese are living there. They are probably the, uh, apart from Japan itself, they are the probably most uh, Japanese populated area on the planet, okay? So they have deployed uh, multiple uh, products from our uh, uh, solution uh, with the AIN, the A2 for bridge and C2, C1 series for uh, as repeaters. So you can see this is actually AIN, okay, for coverage. Also here is AIN, okay. And they also use the A2 for the bridging uh, applications as well, okay. To provide in the 10 major areas in Honolulu. Okay. Here's another one in uh, Asia, in uh, Southeast Asia, actually, in Malaysia. So Johor is actually the um, is the city at the southern tip of the Malaysia Peninsula, just right next to uh, right above Singapore. Okay. And um, this is uh, not a uh, not not a really like a large city, but it has a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, industries over there. They have uh, one of the largest ports there. Uh, they also have a, a very large um, oil refinery uh, a, a, a area there, you know, to process the uh, the oil, okay? So it's one of the major hub there, okay? So there are a lot of uh, people there uh, going in and out. And uh, the municipality, they actually use, uh, decided to deploy this uh, municipality Wi-Fi uh, with our solution. Because they are using the, uh, the LAN post mainly uh, for, the for the deployment. So they use our A2EI, okay? Which is actually the uh, predecessor of uh, A3EI, okay? This is actually what the deployment looks like up on the um, uh, LAN post, okay? And this is actually the portal, you know, when the client, when they want to access the Wi-Fi, all they need is just to sign up on the portal and they can use the, uh, the Wi-Fi there. And here's a very interesting case study, okay? It is actually deployed in one of the, actually, it's not a big city, again, it's a, 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 one of the smaller cities in China in Shandong province, which is um, on the eastern coast of China, okay? It is actually part of the Smart City Wi-Fi project, okay? And um, they, uh, actually our local partner there, actually what they did is actually they are, uh, they have to provide uh, like a Smart City uh, solution to the, uh, to the government, okay? So what they did is actually they integrated our Wi-Fi base stations in the lamp, this is a smart lamp post, okay? This is a smart lamp post making use of LED for uh, energy saving. Um, they also, uh, you will not be able to see our base station because actually they are hiding inside the lamp post here, okay? Even the antenna, okay? And they also build this uh, portal, you know, basically, uh, uh, actually all of them in Chinese, I'm afraid, but uh, what, is, what this portal does is actually they allow those uh, citizens to access this Wi-Fi network in order to, uh, to access all those uh, municipality services, okay? Whether you want, you would like to apply for, uh, 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 you know, electricity supply or to pay to pay to pay uh, tax or all these kind of uh, public services, you can uh, use this portal, you know, to access them, okay? So in the whole city, there are more than 100 AA were deployed, okay? In the lamp on the lamp post. Here's another one in uh, Southeast Asia in the Philippines. This is actually the provision uh, province-wide uh, free Wi-Fi in Cavite. Uh, Cavite is also a, just a right as uh, uh, around I don't know a couple of hundreds kilos from uh, Manila, uh, which is also a very important area for um, those. Uh, uh, Manufacturing plants, etc. Even Intel, they have a big uh, 
part of the Cavite. Okay, so um, so the the government, the provincial government, is uh, is quite uh, uh, rich, I would say, in the in the Philippines. So what they do is they would like to provide the free Wi-Fi service to the citizens, uh, and also for the tourists as well. I mean visitors actually. Uh, so they put up our equipment using AEG and also C1N, you know, in some area to as the repeater. Um, so in over 150 sites, okay, in seven city of this Cavite province. Here's another interesting one, which uh, we just uh, crossed the group. We arrived at uh, Latin America. This is in uh, Guatemala. So in Guatemala, actually we deployed that in uh, two city, uh, in two city. Uh, this is actually a for a marketing campaign with Pepsi. Okay, they have this uh, campaign called the Hoy uh, Pepsi Hoy Wi-Fi. And what it does is actually the they uh, actually Pepsi uh, they okay we pre-generated some uh, pins for them. Okay, so that they uh, printed the uh, the pins in the in the cover inside the cover, and then so when a tourist because these two cities in Guatemala they are like a small uh, you know ancient towns. Okay, so that attracts a lot of tourists every year. So when the tourists visit these two cities, what they do is that they can just simply uh, go and buy Pepsi. Uh, once they buy the Pepsi uh, bottles of Pepsi and they open the the cap and then they will find the pin inside. Okay. So they can use the pin to access using the portal. Okay. Uh, once you connect, the uh, portal will come up. Uh, by the way, they also provide all these portals are uh, provide, are supported by our Altai K as well. So and then you can input the pin and then you can access uh, Wi-Fi for I think 15 to 30 minutes or so. So it's a very very uh, nice way to kind of monetize the Wi-Fi network. Okay, to cooperate with this. Uh, uh, beverage uh, uh, company uh, to have uh, support their marketing campaign, okay, which is a very nice example. Um, here is another, uh, I would say, the municipality or government-funded uh, Wi-Fi project. This is uh, in contrast to those, uh, you know, uh, Pepsi-funded project. This one is actually government-funded. This is actually. Um, I'm not sure if you have this. I think you do have something like that, but you don't call it USO. It's called USO. USO is an actual universal service application. So um, usually the, um, it's available in many countries. So what it does is actually that all the telcos in those countries have to, uh, you know, uh, have to have to give a certain percentage of their annual revenue to the government uh, to support the. Uh, the rural area, okay, the rural connectivity. So the government would then allocate the funds, you know, to build some infrastructure to serve those underserved rural areas, okay. Here, this is the case in uh, actually in Indonesia, uh, because unfortunately we are not allowed to 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 to, to say it in public, okay. It is in Indonesia, as uh, you may know or you may not know, actually uh, Indonesia comprises you know, 7,000 uh, islands in a country, okay? So it is a very difficult to, uh, you know, to provide connectivity to, ev to everywhere, to every corner of the, of, the of the territory. So here, what it, uh, what it, uh, what it makes use uh, for the backbone, actually they even use satellite for the backbone connectivity, okay? Uh, of course, which is not so, uh, cheap, which is uh, not quite expensive, but uh, again, as I said, this is actually funded by government uh, to bridge the divide, the digital divide to those rural areas. Okay, so uh, this one because this is a really remote area, so uh, even the installers it's uh, not easy to get to. So what we provide is actually the the AX series, the AXIN, the one with integrated smart antenna for omni coverage. Okay. With this uh, antenna pole, you know, so for each village, they will just they just need one of these uh, Wi-Fi base station, the AXIN, to cover the whole village. Okay, so it's a uh, very simple to deploy, and that's uh, they can uh, replicate it easily. We have already uh, installed hundreds of them, and uh, we are expecting, you know, some hundreds more. Okay. 
Also in Canada, even though it's a developed country uh, in North America, but they also have a lot of rural area. Uh, that, this is what, uh, what they call the First Nation. Actually, the First Nation is actually those uh, designated areas uh, occupied by those native Indians, okay? And they, uh, because those are the underprivileged group of people. So what they do is actually the government though, uh, they they are, they do allocate some budgets, you know, to provide connectivity for those First Nations. Here, here is a, one of them that we have deployed, which is in the uh, in BC, the British Columbia uh, province. Okay, so uh, they are using a EIN to have a long range coverage of the whole area. And in South Africa itself, we also have participated before in the, this uh, CONNECT program, okay? Um, here we have a deployment with um, the doc, uh, Dr. KK district, municipality in Joburg. Uh, we also have uh, a, a large deployment also in Durban as well, okay? So some of you, maybe after lockdown, you know, you can go and visit and to see how our uh, equipment's been deployed in the real, in the real life, okay? Also, we also, as far as I remember in Joba, we also have uh, a small deployment in the Chinatown as well. So uh, definitely worth, worth a visit if you have time. And in China, uh, China Mobile, as you may all know, China Mobile is uh, probably the, the largest uh, service provider in the world with uh, over 500 million subscribers, okay? It's huge, okay? But they are also um, obliged to provide some connectivity in the rural area. So uh, eventually what they do is actually they deploy our uh, super Wi-Fi solution uh, to co-locate with their mobile tower. This is actually what the mobile tower looks like. And this, in each of this site, they use three of them, three of the AI to provide like a only coverage, okay? And uh, this is actually to provide the, uh, for rural area. So the requirements is not that much. They are talking about only two megabit per family. And they also make use of CPE uh, as well in order to maximize the coverage as well. So uh, this is actually the Liaoning province. This is uh, the, actually the one which is close to uh, Korea, which is on the uh, northeastern part of China. Okay, so over 7,000 base stations are deployed. Okay. And here also we have another deployment. This is a, a countrywide deployment in Jamaica, which is a small uh, island country in the uh, Caribbean. And basically they make use of uh, all our products, okay? Ranging from A8, A2, even C1, uh, because this is for the island-wide coverage, okay? And there's another one in the Latin American market. This is in Colombia. Colombia, they have this program called VIF Digital. So VIF Digital is uh, similar to the South Africa Connect program. It is actually more for the uh, rural area. But in Colombia, because in the rural area, you know, the number of people in the villages are not that many. And also the budget is limited. So they use our mid-range product, A2. And why they pick A2? Because as I mentioned earlier, if you uh, listen well, because our A2 actually comes with an integrated 5 gigas antenna for backhaul purpose. And also with external antennas for the 2.4 gigas, this is for the access. So this is actually like two in one, the AP and the bridge, two in one, and then for a small uh, village coverage, okay? So we develop, uh, we, we deployed around over 200 A2s in eight, across in 80 towns. So this is also very nice uh, small projects in Colombia as well. Uh, here I have another few examples which are more like uh, for those uh, mobile operators to use our Wi-Fi uh, to co-locate for a data offload application, okay? Oops, sorry, I'm running out of... Uh... 
of battery. Okay. So anyway, uh, here I have, uh, I would say the, the, the closing the session. Okay. I um, I guess you guys, this is the time for Q and A. So if you have any questions, this is the time to raise. You can actually use the, 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 the chat the, on the right hand side. There's a little dialog. You can type in your questions and, um, yeah, we can try to answer some of them if time allows. Uh, so Leon, you can take the floor now. Let me just pick up my, um, the charger. In the meantime. All right. No, thanks, Danny. Appreciate that. Uh, Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that excellent presentation. Um, I think it uh, gives us an insight in terms of the products, uh, brief history of the company, and really the deployment, the case studies, I think, have been 